already. Just wave at your neighbor and let them know that you are glad to see them on this morning. What a privilege, what an honor to be in God's house one more time. Let us pray. Most gracious and eternal God, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for your loving kindness, for your grace that you have bestowed upon each of us. So God, we come saying thank you. We come saying, God, we honor you, we love you, we adore you. God, you are so worthy. God, welcome into this place. God, we pray your blessings upon the man of God that shall bring forth your word. Anoint him afresh. Use him, God, for your glory. God, we pray your blessings upon the musicians, the deacons, the greeters, and all those that will take part in this service. And God, we shall give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise because you are so worthy. And it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen. I'm going to stay Mount Airy. And welcome to this morning's meditation. Today's exercise is a simple relax and release format. Allowing us to set an intention. I don't know if any of you are familiar. But an intention is an act stating with your actions what you are trying to accomplish or through your actions. So I'm gonna ask you to, you know, there are many things that you might wanna change in your life or add, take, or make some kind of uplift to it. And usually an intention, setting an intention on a day-to-day -day basis will help you do that. So I'm gonna ask you to put away your distractions, sit upright, long spine I invite you to close your eyes you don't have to there's no right or wrong way to do this and bring your awareness to your breath inhaling and exhaling we're going to take three inhales and exhales deep breath in for one hold it and release deep breath in for two Hold it and release. And one last time. Deep breath in for three. Hold it. Release. And relax. Just relax. If your mind starts to wander, that's okay. Let the thoughts come. Let them go. That's what the mind does. But just relax. Feel the relaxation. Whatever that is for you. Feel that comfort. Now, I'm going to ask you through your mind's eye. Bring about something. Whatever it is you might want to change. Something you may want to add start doing. You may want to start meditating every day. You may want to take some away, but see that in your mind's eye to succession. See what it is you want or don't want to come to fruition. to act. 
ask you to begin to reorient yourself back to your space. We're going to take two more breaths, two more inhales and releases. Inhaling for one. Release. Inhaling for two. And release. And relax. So an intention can be a good way of changing things and bringing uplift to your life. Adding that with a little commitment. And it can bring great, great change and joy to your everyday life. I want to thank each and every one of you for your participation in this exercise. Let me take my opportunity to wish you all, you and your families, a happy holiday. And until next time, namaste. Welcome to the house of the Lord. I know you're glad to be here because you look wonderful. Can you just raise your hands and say, God, we love you. Come on, all over the house. We know that you love them, but we ask you to come on and participate in some activity today with your body and your movement. We invite you to stand to your feet because we come to bless the Lord. We come to make a boast of him and tell him how wonderful he is. And I know you do too, so come on and just get this in your spirit and say, I hear the music in the air, hallelujah. Come on, all over the house, here we go. I hear the music, I hear the music in the air. I hear the music. The music Come on, can you hear the music? I hear the music. Come on, here we go. I feel like praising. I feel like praising. I feel like praising. I feel like praising. Praising. I feel like praising. Hey, I feel the rhythm. I feel the rhythm. Can you feel the rhythm? I feel the rhythm. Come on, anybody want to dance? Ciao!
wanted to get some adrenaline going because you've been up all morning with God and it's such a great thing to come and give him praise because we have activities of our limbs and we have vocals and there's times when people can't even shout they can't even move their body but we come to give him glory because we can and because he's so worthy of all the praise however it is that you can give him some glory and praise we invite you to do so hallelujah so we come this morning again to say, God, we thank you. There is nothing worth more that could ever come close to how God loves and adores us. So with our mouth and our heart open wide to him this morning, we come to declare that Holy Spirit, your presence is always welcome here. Hallelujah. The words are on the Lord, but come on and help us sing this. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing that can ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Just look at somebody and say, I've tasted and I've seen. Come on. I've tasted of the sweetest of loves. Where my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone. Shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Come on, let's do that one more time. Can you help us sing? It's real easy. Say there's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth that could ever come close. That could ever. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. You're our living hope. Come on, tell me. Your presence, your presence. You've been through some stuff. Come on, testify and say, I've tasted and I've seen. Come on. I've tasted of the sweetest of love where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence love come on all over the house can you just cry out Holy Spirit come on and say Holy Spirit you are well come flood this place come your glory, God, your glory, God, is what I want to be overcome. Oh, oh how we love you. Oh, how we love your presence. Come on, one more time. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Oh, your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Come on. From the top. One more time with us. Come on and say, there's nothing worth more. There's nothing Come on, that could ever, ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord, your presence. This is a place where we can witness to somebody and tell them how great God is. I've tasted and I've seen. I've tasted sweet as love. Heart becomes free. Shame is undone. Shame is undone. Your presence. 
Because God, you get the glory in all things. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Yeah. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your. Let us become. Let us become. Let us become, let us experience the glory of God. Last time, let us become, let us become more aware of your presence. God, we want to be more aware, more aware, more aware of your presence in our lives. For there never is a time when you are not present. And yet sometimes we can be so focused on what we're going through. Don't realize that you are still present. So God, make us more aware. We want to be more aware. Ask now God to allow the words of my mouth meditations of my heart to be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we thank you and pray. Amen. Oh, yes.
consciousness. There is a consciousness that's needed in this moment. In this moment. Psalm 132. Psalm 132. I want to read the first five verses and then verse 13 through 16. Psalm 132. O Lord, remember in David's favor all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. Verse 13. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless its provisions. I will satisfy its poor with bread. Its priest I will clothe with salvation. And its faithful will shout for joy. It's what I do Just one more time Praises, praises what, what I do It's what, what I do When I'm going through yeah. Praise is what I do. Yeah, it's what I do. 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 Oh, For over my tenure as pastor of this great congregation, I have sought to share words of wisdom from and beyond the word of God that we might be edified and equipped to engage in discipleship and ministry. For this occasion of preaching, I am reminded of an African proverb that I've used quite frequently, particularly during premarital counseling sessions. This proverb says that a wise man profits from his mistakes, but a wiser man or woman profits from the mistakes of others. The essential wisdom from this proverb seeks to help us know that there are some pitfalls and problems in life that we can avoid and steer clear of. There are some uh, trauma, uh, traumatic traps uh, that do not have to grip or drag us down on our journey. We don't always have to uh, touch or stick our finger in the proverbial fire to know that the stove is hot. Have I got a witness? But there are moments, brothers and sisters, in this life 
when we can learn from the experiences of others, not in a way that limits, limits our experiences nor confines us to particular outcomes, but rather in ways that can be instructive and profitable for our lives. This is one of the many reasons why we study, we preach, we teach from the sacred scriptures, because they offer snapshots and even spotlights on the journey of faith and our relationship with our God. For the scriptures provide us a picture of the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, as well as the many conflicts, complexities that arise during our walk with our God. For it was Romans, the 15th chapter and verse 4, that reminds us that everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Let me say that again. <clears throat> this scripture says that everything that was written in our past was written to teach us that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Somebody say hope. See, that's another way of declaring what the proverb seeks to teach us. And that is we can learn life lessons from the men, women, boys and girls of the Bible such that uh, we have insight hmm, into what to do as well as what not to do and or say. But not just this, from the scriptures, we also learn how the people of God endured through all they experienced so that they might have hope. Now, I was talking to a student uh, who was a part of the D-Men uh, Doctorate of Ministry cohort that Dr. Brawley, David Brawley and I are cohort guides within. And I mentioned the distinction that Dr. Cornell West uh, makes about optimism and hope. And while I'm going to paraphrase his thoughts, in essence, he is saying that optimism is attached to more external signs of progress. That is, things are moving in the direction that I desire, therefore, I'm optimistic because things are looking up for me. Hope, on the other hand, brothers and sisters, is not attached as much to external signs as much as it is to an internal conviction and belief that God is going to make everything all right. See, our ancestors didn't have a lot of optimistic uh, and optimism about about life and yet because of their internal conviction that God was still God so that even when there was no external evidence to back up their claim they would declare that over my head I hear music in the air there must be a God somewhere for the Lord will make a way somehow Therefore, I have hope, not because I see it with my physical eyes. Uh, I have hope because God's word declares that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And as you and I tell the truth, we must uh, all be intentional in holding on to our hope because in this time of in this time that we're living in optimism is not enough help me somebody for optimism can only take you so far for if i tell the truth i'm not optimistic about what i see and hear coming out of washington but i'm hopeful that god is still working it out for our good. 
I'm not optimistic about how this country views the lives of black and brown people, yet I am hopeful that God will continue to give us strength to fight the good fight of faith. I need you to know that I'm not optimistic about the not guilty verdict in the Rittenhouse murder uh, because, murder trial because of what it underscores for us again and again is that white male innocence is protected and even enshrined while black teenage male life is always seen as a threat to be neutralized by any means necessary. Don't believe me, ask Trayvon Martin. And so I'm definitely not optimistic about the Ahmaud Aubrey murder trial outcome this week, even though the murderer admitted that this young man made no verbal threat, nor did he have any weapon on him except his body seen as a threat. Yet I am hopeful that God will continue to raise up black pastors and people and leaders to stand up for justice and healing for our families. And so, my brothers and sisters, in this moment, I look to the scriptures for a word of strength that will help us endure. And as tempted as I was to shift from this text, given the written house acquittal, for I, I know, uh, we know that the system is not really broken. But again and again, we see that the legal, the legal system is working as it has been designed, primarily to protect and offer justice to white male and females, whatever your social, educational, or economic status may be. And I realize that this text for today, though, offers us insight into how we might learn from and then apply the wisdom found in this psalm. For this psalm, Psalm 132 is a third person account of the life and legacy of David, considered the great king of Israel. In particular, this, the season of David's efforts, we find in this psalm, David's efforts to find a space and a place to build the temple and the place where the ark of the covenant, which represented the presence of God, uh, would be dedicated within. It is a psalm that, the, that some commentators like uh, uh, Derek Suderman believe uh, reiterates God's commitment to the Davidic covenant and reasserts the intimate relationship between Israel and the coming Messiah. And I believe for you and I, this psalm provides another example of how a person's life can be consequentially instructive for our lives. For David, brothers and sisters, we know David. David is a courageous and complex character in the Hebrew Bible. David, the one who, uh, who is said a man after God's own heart. David. Uh, yet he was also a man with blood on his hands. Um, David, a man of music and a man of misfortune and murderous moves. The psalmist does not uh, represent and present David as a perfect man, but rather a man from whom we can profit. For in this very first verse, God's spirit gives us insight into this psalmist prayer the psalmist prays oh lord remember in david's favor all the hardships he endured now let me just pause there to help us see that this psalmist is asking god hear it hear it see it this psalmist is asking god the psalmist is making intersection that god would remember how does that sound that God, the one who's omniscient. Uh, now, the reason why that struck me is I don't recall God having a problem remembering anything. 
For God knows our name. <laughs> God knows the very number of hairs on our head. God knows the very number of days of our life from beginning to end. What does God need to remember that God doesn't already know? As a matter of fact, the only thing that the scripture teaches us about God forgetting is when God casts our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. And as the old preachers say, put a no fishing sign going there so you can't go back and get it. And so, brothers and sisters, the truth of the matter is, it's not that God tends to forget. It's really God's people who get so caught up in what they are going through in the moment that they and we forget about the God who helped us get through our past and the God who is with us right now. So, in a real sense, the psalmist is being rhetorical in his request by asking God to search God's divine memory files and to recall all uh, that God has done to help David endure. He says, your grace and your mercy helped him through and covered him in the mist. God, your eternal energy wrapped up in divine presence helped David endure the taunts uh, 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 as a shepherd's boy, he, he, your, your grace and mercy helped him endure and you kept him, uh, the, kept the lion and the bear from devouring him. God, you kept the sheep that you gave him a sense of, uh, you kept all that was around him. God, you helped him endure. Instead of using Saul's armor, uh, you allowed him to use what he had slingshot and five smooth stones. God, you lifted him up even when his father and his brothers sought to overlook him. God, you helped him navigate life when Saul turned from king to competitor and sought to kill him. God, you kept him while he was on the run until he became king. God, you provided for him. You established him as your king. God, you even and corrected him yet kept him on the throne after he slept with Bathsheba and then had her husband killed God you even when his child sought to dethrone him and killed him you helped him make it through it all God you were there for him and while some of us will remember those stories that I shared episodes in David's life let me declare, brothers and sisters, that while our lives are not, may not contain the exact same events and situations that David endured, you and I know right now all of the events, all of the occurrences, you know all of the situations, all of the schemes, all of the plots, you know all of the mistakes, you know all of the setbacks, you know all of the trauma and the drama that God gave us the power to endure, you know all the sickness, you know all the heartache, you know all the headaches that God helped you endure. You know everything. You know what you've been through. You know if it had not been for God on your side, you would not have endured. You would have given up. You would have checked out. And I know that where we are right now in this country is full of strife and turmoil. I know that some of us have personal issues. Uh, but somebody needs to know that if God did it then, he can do it again. If God did it back then, then God is still rare right now. Yes. We might need to pause and cry to express how we, we need to express. After all that we've been enduring. And all that God has kept us in the midst of. Ah, but you need to thank God that like David, you can declare, I'm still here. And because of all of God's favor, ah, that it strengthened him to endure, the psalmist lifts up David's passionate practice when he promised that God 
that he would find a place for God's presence to rest. See, David was so determined to find a place for the Ark of the Covenant representing God's presence to dwell. The psalmist quotes David, and I quote, I will not enter my house or get into my bed, nor will I give sleep to my eyelids, nor slumber to my eyes until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty God of Jacob. Now, the actual unfolding of the events, you know, in David's life will show that despite his passion and persistence, preparing the people of God to build the temple, y'all know that David would not be the actual one building the permanent dwelling place. That assignment would be given to his son, Solomon. But yet in this lesson, even though he would eventually come to know that he wouldn't build the temple, he would be able to accomplish the task that he wanted to accomplish most. He wouldn't be able to do that. The text helps us see that David still encouraged his son to continue the work and kept preparing the temple until his last days. I love this. David was still passionate, even though it wouldn't be fulfilled in his lifetime. See, as wiser men and women, let us keep working us the assignments of our hands, whether we see the completion in our lifetime or not. Some folks say, well, it ain't worth my time because I ain't going to see the, the, the dividend of my investment. Well, brother and sister, we need to acknowledge that we are here right now reaping the benefits of those who sold, those who labored. We have this building. Some folk would never see this building, but we are here right now. We ought to work until our day is done. We've got to pay it forward. For in the words of Sweet Honey and the Rock, we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Until the killing of black men, black mother's son, is as important to the killing of white men, white mother's son. I hear somebody in the spirit saying, Pastor, you've used that before in your sermon. I say, you're right. I hear somebody say, uh, don't you have some other examples you can use? I say, you're right. So when you going to use another example? Until the killing of black men, my mother, son, is as important as the killing of white men. Why? That's when I will change my story. Well, we might get tired. We might need a break. But we have got to keep pushing, keep showing up, keep preaching, keep teaching, keep organizing, keep praying, keep dancing. I know it looks bad. I know you're disappointed like I. We don't know what they're going to do with Ahmaud Aubrey, but whether they do it or not, we got to stay on the battlefield until the Lord calls us home. Yes, it's dangerous, but you got to stay on. Why? Why must we do that, Brother Newton? Text says, verses 13 through 16. Because of the hope we find in these verses. Verses 13 declares, For the Lord has chosen Zion. Hmm. He has desired it for habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. I will, hear this, verse 15, I will abundantly bless its provision. 
I will satisfy its poor with bread. Its priest will I will clothe with salvation and its faithful will shout <laughs> for joy. My brothers and sisters, the ancestors understood that even when the text didn't include us, God still invited us. Y'all, 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 y'all gonna get that. Even when uh, the version of the text didn't include us, God still had a space for us. So that in verse 13, it may say Zion, <laughs> but it also includes you and I. For we are the people of God as well. Am I right? Am I talking to anybody? And we know that God's Holy Spirit has taken up residence in each of us. God is in each and every one of us. The Holy Spirit is inside of you right now. I heard somebody say, I don't see how you can do what you do and you don't, and you've got the Holy Ghost. Look at the life of David. He was anointed and yet still win a verse. Anybody know ha, that you may not live up to it always, but you know the Holy Spirit. One thing you can rest assured that God's Holy Spirit is inside. God's Spirit will see to it that our provisions are abundantly blessed. <laughs> In other words, Whatever the provision God has, God will make it blessed and enough until more shows up. God will satisfy those without the poor and the provision with provisions of bread. God will work on the priests and the leaders of God's house and will close us in righteousness for God uh, can do what even our best cannot do. And I'm, I'm, this is it. I'm done here. Text says that the priest's going to be clothed. Some of y'all wondering what's going on. I got a suit on today. <laughs> y'all on, on, on virtual sanctuary, they crazy in here, man. They trying to say, I got to go preach somewhere later on. That's why, right? right? <laughs> Whether I'm clothed in a suit or not, I got the righteousness spirit of God in my spirit. I got to go, but, but that, that's us. That's us. That's preachers. That, we got to have some righteousness. You know, righteousness to God, for God. But, but it says, for the faithful, I like this, and it's faithful will shout for joy. I gotta go, I gotta go. But if you know you are part of God's faithful contingent, look and see the text. It doesn't say the people's faithfulness. It's in the text. It doesn't say the people's faithfulness. It says God's faithful. Y'all missed that. Which means that the emphasis is on God's faithfulness and not our faithfulness. Y'all missed that. Denzel, they missed that, but let me help them. If we're dependent on our faithfulness, we may not have joy, but we may be at the altar repenting. But the text says, God's faithful will shout for joy. Is there anybody in this place who realized that God has been faithful even when you were not? God has been consistent even when you're not, I don't joy because I've been faithful. I joy because great is thy faithfulness. 
morning, by morning, new mercies I see, all I have needed, thy hands have provided, anybody know God's faithfulness is great, say yes. That's why I've got joy. That's why I can shout for joy. Because even when I wasn't, even when you weren't, God was still faithful. Taking care of us. Everybody standing. Everybody standing all over this place. Maybe you're here and you would say, Pastor... You would say, Pastor, this is my word. This is my word for today. That I've got to thank God. That God has helped me endure. We're going to endure this this week. Maybe you're here. And maybe you're here and you realize this was a rough week. This was a rough week. Personal things happening in your life things happening to people that you love, and then the reality of what has been the practice of this country. That is, white innocence is protected, even while our children, who do, who, when they do nothing to no one, are still labeled a threat such that none of us want our children in earnest to have an encounter with the police without us. And even if we're there, we know the anxiety that we experience. Maybe you're here. Maybe you would say, Pastor, I've got personal, I've got this. Maybe there's just some other stuff that's happening. And I'm anticipating even this Ahmaud Aubrey's verdict. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here and you just want some prayer for how to navigate, how to negotiate all that's happening. Just lift your hand if you know that's you. I want to give you something as we pray. I see you. I'm going to give you something to prepare your hearts for prayer. I'm thankful that God always has resources, even when we feel hemmed in. This morning, I want to read something that I posted on my Facebook page from Dr. Danielle J. Buhuru. She is, she runs the Sankofa CPE Clinical Pastoral Education Center, I believe in Chicago. She said this, and I want to lift this as we prepare to go to God in prayer. In light of the Rittenhouse verdict, please practice self-care. One, resist social media arguments and fights that will emotionally drain you. Two, Schedule a meeting with a mental health therapist. Three, be close to friends and family who love and support you. Four, practice mindfulness and other meditation exercises. Five, go for a walk and exercise. Six, eat a healthy meal and drink water. Seven, resist bad theology. It's okay to be mad, sad. Give yourself space. God will not punish you thinking you you have a lack of faith. And eight, commit to the work of justice in our society. Don't just vent on social media. Amen. God, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for our sister, our brother, the hands that are lifted. We know the hearts that are open. 
You know the hearts that feel raw, bruised, whether by their personal situations and or by what's happening across this country. There seems to be an emboldenedness surfacing again. But God, we pray that you might remind us of what you've already brought us through. Help us to know that just as you brought us through that, you are with us right now in this. Pray right now that our brother, my sister might gain the lessons and the wisdom from the scriptures that you don't call perfect people, but you perfect the calling in imperfect people. We ask now, God, that you might do your work in us. Help us to know that because you are faithful, we have reason to joy. That even when we don't live up to our own expectations or the expectations that others may have, thank you, God, that you are still with us amidst the highs and the lows of life. We ask now, God, that you continue to cover this space and place, continue to allow it to be another manifestation of your presence, for we know you go with us wherever we are. You cover us wherever we are. You will never limit yourself to any one particular place. <coughs> I pray for your people. I pray for healing, for your power to reign, recovery to reign in all of their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we thank you, we pray. Amen. Amen. As you are standing... I'm going to ask that you prepare for to receive the Lord's sacrifice. Oh, yes, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never. It reaches, it reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows through, and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, oh yeah, the love that gives me strength. Today, you will never lose its power. Thankful, Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. Chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, we are healed to Jesus. The song says the blood will never, ever lose its power because it, it strengthens us day by day to Jesus. Come on, let's thank God for the word. It reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, yes, it does. And it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yeah. Oh, the love that gives me strength from day. Yeah. 
Let's thank God for the word of God on today. Am I still mic'd up? Okay, I'm still mic'd up. Um, I'm going to go uh, share with the great people, the Grace Baptist Church, Pastor Lindsey Curtis. Uh, they're celebrating, I think, 140-something year uh, anniversary, church anniversary. So we're going to celebrate uh, with them. I'm going to send our regards. Please continue to keep all of us in prayer. I think I see, is that Sister Betty Adams? in the house amen she's back bless you bless you bless you bless you thank god pastor kathy's going to come and share announcements um please be mindful of the connect announcement um it is my prayer we are celebrating 10 years of connect work so please she'll give you details about what we're asking everybody uh, to do as it relates to connect. God bless you. See you during the week. See you next week. Happy Thanksgiving if I don't see you. God bless you. Amen. Let's give our pastor a hand clap. We thank God for God's word on this morning. Uh, we don't have anyone on our bereaved list this morning, but if you know of anyone um, that's dealing with bereavement, let's just continue to lift them up in prayer. Our drive-by Thanksgiving dinner is this Tuesday. We will be accepting food and monetary donations today. Um, we also have collection boxes in the back for coats, uh, hats, gloves, scarves for children, coats for anyone. Um, if you would like to donate anything, please put it in the box that's in the narthex. Uh, the senior ushers and sisters at the well has been, have been facilitating um, that event, so please um, support them as much as you can. We will be closed for Thanksgiving holiday, so staff will not be in the building on November the 25th and the 26th, so there will no, not be anyone here. We will be closed for the holiday. We will be, uh, as Pastor mentioned, we will host the Connect 10th Anniversary Assembly on November the 30th at 7 p.m. This will be streamed, amen, amen. And registration is required, so make sure if you plan to attend that you do register, whether you're gonna be here in person or you're going to be watching it through streaming. We will have our in-person annual Holy Spirit discernment session on Wednesday, December the 1st, at 7 p.m. Only disciples of Mount Airy may attend. So please plan uh, to schedule to be uh, with us on Wednesday, December the 1st at 7 p.m. Amen? Amen. Everybody will please stand at this time. If I don't see you, I just want to wish each of you a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving with family, with friends, or even if you're by yourself, just know that God is with you. Just know that we are praying with and for each of you. Amen. Amen. Most gracious and eternal God, we thank you for your word on today. We thank you for ministering to our hearts, minds, and spirits. We thank you for encouraging us to go on a little while longer, God, just to see what the end will bring. For we know that you are with us. We know that you are leading and guiding us by your spirit. God, we trust you. God, we thank you. And as we leave this place, never your presence. God, be with us. Protect us. Keep us. We, got, we honor you, God. We love you and we give your name all the glory, all the praise and honor because you are worthy. And it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen. amen.